Has the Biden administration abandoned the people of Lahaina, Hawaii, after devastating wildfires tore through that town, destroyed countless businesses, homes, lives? Now the people of Lahaina are trying to rebuild, but do they have the help of the Biden administration? And has America largely forgotten this story? Where are the missing children? Where are the missing people? Will these people be able to return to their homes and rebuild, or are big businesses swooping in and buying up this land? This is a story that's been on our minds for many, many months. And Nick Sorter, independent journalist, is in Lahaina, and we were able to catch up with him near a roadblock who's been doing some amazing journalism there. Uh, Nick, great to see you. Welcome back to the show. Uh, thanks so much for joining us again. Yeah, thank you for having me, Clayton. So you arrived there a, a short time ago, a few days ago, to see uh, and assess what's been happening in Lahaina. Just your impressions upon returning to this area uh, now, how many months has it been since these devastating wildfires have hit? So it's been over five months now. And if you talk to practically any resident that is here at this point, they are they're incredibly frustrated. And honestly, nothing has gotten better. If anything, it's gotten worse. OK, the Biden administration has come in here and they're running businesses out of here. The, the Small Business Administration promised over five months ago thousands of people relief loans and they still have not paid out so they're forced off the island at this point they're given every excuse in the book to say you know why the money hasn't cleared yet and you know all of it is a, it's a bunch of bs and so the people here at this point believe that this is all intentional and it's really just a way to drive them off the island by choking them out and it, it, it's terrifying to think about that you know, the, the government and, you know, FEMA and such are supposed to be helping these people. It's not their fault. They didn't do this. Okay, they're a victim of, at a very minimum, government incompetence that let the fire burn down the entire town. It's not their fault. But now they are totally suffering. And uh, honestly, Clayton, I wish I could say it's getting better. It's, it's not. It's getting worse. Well, what's amazing to me, because during COVID, you know, small business loans, you could get you could get the loan without even frankly, proving that you even have a business, right? They were sending money out, right. billions of dollars out to people, but the people of Lahaina somehow can't get access to these loans to help them rebuild. It seems hypocritical, seems odd, doesn't it? Yeah, it absolutely seems odd. And, you know, the fact that we're talking over five months at this point, and you're hearing excuses from like the, the SBA saying, oh, well, you know, it was supposed to clear, but, you know, we had a software update, which caused a bunch of problems in our systems and oh well yeah, your loan's being reviewed by a supervisor now and you should hear back within one to two months i mean it, it, it's like it's almost a, a a joke and nobody's holding these people accountable and luckily we have you know people like you that are willing to actually air this stuff now because honestly the mainstream media is nowhere to be found here I, i'm the only guy with a with a camera at this point Nobody wants to talk about Lahaina at this point. I guess it's not a sexy story anymore. And so, but what happens in that case, as you very well know, once you stop hassling the government, they're going to totally shaft these people. That's what they do in every situation like this. This is no different. Well, we, hopefully we can continue to press the government to make these people whole and take care of these people over their incompetence and, and you know, and what happened there. Um, can you describe what you've been seeing over the past few days? You're standing, can you explain where you are and what's behind you? And just describe some of the conversations you've been having with the people of Lahaina. Yeah, so we're standing in front of one of many roadblocks out here. You are still not able to, if I were to, to walk past the barrier that's right behind the camera here, I would be arrested immediately, as would uh, anybody that, they, they give out permits every once in a while to, to residents. You get a one-week permit from FEMA and that's it, then you can't go in to your property after that, which is insanity. You're not allowed to rebuild on your own property. Uh, you have to, to wait for government approval to do any of that. And they have not approved a single permit for anybody to do that. Uh, insurance company or otherwise, none of them are allowed in either. So you can't even get adjusters in there to uh, to to actually help these people get paid out. And you're like, why are they stonewalling? Yeah, why are they stonewalling? That was going to be my question. Why are they telling people they can't return? They can't start cleaning up and start rebuilding? 
We see it immediately after tornadoes and hurricanes. There's people, the whole communities come together and pick up debris and start rebuilding immediately. Right. So that's one of the things that a lot of these people are uh, thinking in their minds is that this is all a, a setup. It's a land grab. They're trying to force these people out and choke them out so that they can't you know, actually afford to stay. That's one of the biggest concerns. And honestly, a lot of people, and I didn't want to believe that in the beginning either. You know, when I first came here back last year, and a lot of people that live here, obviously they didn't want to believe that either. But the more and more people I talk to, that's kind of the conclusion that they have to draw at this point, because it's either absolute gross incompetence on behalf of the government, or they're doing this in, in intentionally. And uh, at this point, everybody believes that this is intentional and that this is a land grab. Yeah, they've been five months now with their businesses destroyed. They have, they're, they're without a home. So where are these people living and how are these people going to provide for their families their way of life? We know small stores, small grocery stores, small businesses have all been destroyed in that area. And the government is not helping them. They can't get insurance payouts. They can't get information about their homes. I, I'm using the word abandoned because that is, that's exactly what it feels like to me. Right. Yeah. And a lot of them do feel like they have been abandoned. And, and absolutely. And you're asking where a lot of these people are staying. I mean, uh, about a mile down the road here, you have a park that's right on the beach where there's literally a tent city that has been set up for people that are that have been displaced, that aren't getting any any aid. And, you know, it, it goes beyond just people that lost their houses in the fire because, you know, there, there's there's a housing shortage here to begin with. And so. Uh, FEMA has now been driving rents through the roof. And so people that weren't originally victims of the situation are now being evicted because FEMA is paying, you know, at least 130% of what the rent was uh, prior. So a lot of the people that are, are now homeless and living on the beach in tents are people that didn't even have their houses burned down. They're a victim of a secondary crisis that's being created by the, the, the Biden wow. administration and FEMA. Wow. So... That's fascinating. I haven't heard that. So these individuals being pushed out of homes that they were paying for and they were renting, the landlords then are evicting them in favor of FEMA prices. It's almost like converting your house to an Airbnb because you know you could somehow make more money. So you drive out long term right. rentals, renters. Am I hearing you correctly? Absolutely. You are. Absolutely. You are. Yeah. And and, and I know people personally at this point that are that are in this situation that are uh, being evicted and you know there's supposed to be a, an eviction moratorium however that's not being enforced uh, by any means and and so it's it really it kind of hits home when you know these these people that that I met back months ago that were you know trying to just get through the situation and, you know, they were doing fairly well with it. They were coping. And now all of a sudden they're being thrown out on the street. It, it, it's, it's mind boggling to me that we're letting this happen in the United States of America. I don't I don't get it. We've heard official death numbers right around 99. But when you talk to the people of Lahaina, and the, you know, we've obviously covered the missing children story many, many months ago, um, accounting for all the people that have gone missing who are killed, do, do those numbers sound correct to the people of Lahaina, 99 people? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Now, it, it, this is the only disaster that I've ever seen where the official death count has dropped by 30%. Uh, and, 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 you know, it, it, people, people here tend to believe that it's in the, the range of at least three to 400, uh, and the official count is 99. However, the government gives very few details on who those 99 people are. We have no idea how many of them are children. We have no idea how many that like, we don't even know the names of all of these people that are that have been confirmed dead. You know, it, it, they're they're really the lack of transparency is driving people crazy. And it, it's it's really hurting the situation based on the fact that nobody nobody trusts anybody at this point. Nobody trusts anything the government is saying. And it's causing chaos in the community. It's awful. What has uh, the Biden administration response been? Have they given you any indication when they plan to arrive? When is President Biden going to touch down with Air Force One and do a big tour of the community? 
Well, so the, the Biden administration is very silent on this issue right now. They're not talking about it at all because they know that this is a, a total uh, cluster. I mean, you look at East Palestine, Ohio, that, that is very similar to, to what's going right. on here, where they're basically just trying to sweep it under the rug and they just want it to go away because it's a political nightmare for uh, Joe Biden. And I mean, just like East Palestine, Ohio, he, he's totally neglected. Uh, these people out here, and these, I mean, you're talking, these are, these are really good, nice, hardworking people. What, you know, Lahaina is a, is a, is a historic town, you know, well, the families have been here for generations and generations in these homes that have, have burned down and they all feel abandoned by uh, the, the government at this point. And uh, I, I don't see that getting better anytime soon, unless there are some drastic changes here. Hmm. Nick's order. Middle of the night, before sunrise, before sunrise there in Lahaina, don't get arrested. Uh, just walking around, seeing what the damage is. It's unbelievable. The government won't let you see what's going on there and uh, putting out, uh, you know, you'll be arrested if you set foot on this land. Something very fishy uh, continues to unfold in Lahaina. Nick, thanks for your great reporting on this. We appreciate it. And thanks for keeping this story front and center. Thank you for having me on, Clayton. Appreciate it. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it. And we will see you next time, everyone.